I come to you in the name of God, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. There are a lot of holidays in these past few weeks besides Christmas, those of other faiths and cultural traditions, as well as other days in the church, like the feasts of Stephen, of John, of the Holy Innocents, the Holy Name, and of course today, the Epiphany, after the 12th day of Christmas. On January 3rd, for another little commemoration, I lifted a glass to toast the professor, J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and who this year had his 27th birthday. That's 127th if you don't speak Hobbit. If you're not familiar, those are quest stories with heroes resisting great evil and fighting for great good, all in a fantastical world conjured up by Tolkien's deep familiarity with European mythology and his own faithful Roman Catholic imagination. The main characters, the hobbits, are a diminutive people whom Tolkien modeled with great affection after his own English villagers and country folk. They love food and drink and good fellowship with cheer, though they can be a bit fussy and tend towards suspicion of difference and they certainly don't approve of adventures or anything else that might upset the status quo. At heart, though, they're good folk, and they often rise to the challenge before them. Early on in The Lord of the Rings, Bilbo, who was the protagonist in The Hobbit, I know there are a lot of names to keep up with, warns his nephew, Frodo, the new character, to be careful. It's a dangerous business, Frodo, going out your door. He says, you step onto the road, and if you don't keep your feet, there's no knowing where you might be swept off to. Another celebration we just passed was the calendar New Year. Any of y'all have any good New Year's Eve reflections? Resolutions? What kind do you make? Massive, life-changing resolutions? just a few little tweaks and adjustments here and there, or none, because you can't tell me what to do and I'm fine the way I am, thank you very much. (laughs) How does it turn out? I know there are some people of heroic discipline and iron will out there who can accomplish whatever they set their mind to. But conventional wisdom, in my own experience at least, is that I usually peter out maybe a month, maybe two, Change is hard. Resolutions or no, though, the new year invites us to another year's journey around the sun. With all the opportunities for growth that those resolutions pine for, with all the challenges reality brings, which makes their accomplishment difficult. A new journey around the sun. The Magi knew something about journeys by the end of their days, though theirs was to the sun, not around him. We don't actually know much about these three wise men from the east, as our gospel translation names them. Our pageants often have them arrive with the shepherds, though that's a conflation with Luke's nativity, as Matthew doesn't mention any shepherds. No one's totally sure who started calling them kings, though Our readings from Isaiah and Psalms might have been inspiration for that tradition. And while tradition names them Gaspar, Melchior, Balthazar, which are memorable names, we don't actually know that there were three of them. There were three gifts, though, which draws the pleasing symmetry of the notion. In any case, learned men, magicians, perhaps, certainly astrologers, had seen a star which revealed to them a king had been born. But it was the first century. There were plenty of kings to be had. That's all the text says, though there must have been something special to draw them, enough so that they left the comforts of their far-off lands, the comforts of their familiar people, 
to seek this child. I wonder what they thought they'd find. It was a long journey. We can deduce that. In the next part of the passage, which we do not hear today, Herod, enraged that the Magi did not report back to him, sent his soldiers after all the male children two years of age or younger. So we know that there was at least a little bit of time after Jesus' birth. Did the Magi ever get discouraged on the way? Some stories say that there were several who began the journey but turned back after it grew challenging or after it began to take too long. They had lives to get back to after all. Eventually, our Magi found their way to the Christ child. One of them notes dryly in the famous T.S. Eliot poem, it was, you might say, satisfactory. Matthew tells us, though, that they were overwhelmed with joy, that they were drawn to pay homage. King and God and sacrifice, our hymn names the child. Did they understand all that? Or did they just know that something was different now? That something had changed? Did they know they were the first Gentiles to recognize God's outpouring beyond his chosen people? That in this baby was the fulfillment of the promise to Abraham that in him and his line would be a blessing, not just to the people of Israel, but to all the families of the earth that as our author of the letter to the Ephesians writes, the boundless riches of the mystery of God's loving kindness is that it is, in this child, offered not just to people of the right family or those clever enough to sleuth out the mystery, but offered to all, openly, plainly, simply. Here's what I believe the Magi saw, whether they knew it or not then at that moment that God's overwhelming love for his creatures, for his children, cannot be contained. It will pour out. It will break through human determined measures of worth. It will disregard human imposed borders to seek us out and to invite us to seek him. It will find us wherever we are and it will not leave us there. I've been baking a lot recently, and this image has continued to come to me. Have you ever overproofed dough or let it rise for too long? It spills out over the container, gloriously messy, getting everywhere. I've heard it can even break glass if you leave it in the, lid with the, jar, in, in the jar with the lid on. I think God's love might be something like that. God's love pours out so much that God is three persons. Love, the animating energy between Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And even in that dance of the divine trinity, there are greater depths. God inviting us, mortals, dust of the earth, into God's heart as well. We've all been invited. God doesn't leave us where God finds us, thank goodness. We all have a ticket. But the journey will change us. There are risks, dangers, there are challenges on the road. We may be tempted to turn back towards the comforts of what we know, of what is safe, before we find out what the hullabaloo is all about. We may feel it's too long a trip, that it costs too much. We may not be sure what we found when we get there or miss universe changing, universal good news, because what we find seems too familiar, unremarkable. It may even make life difficult if we do realize what has happened, because everything then will be different. We will be different. As Eliot concludes his, his poem, the Magi was no longer at ease here in the old dispensation with an alien people clutching their gods. But friends, I'm here to tell you, the reward is worth the risk. There is joy to be had, overwhelming joy to know 
and feel and even see that there is a place for you in God's beloved community. That God wants you. That our worth, whatever our resolutions are or are not, however successful we may or may not be in keeping them, our worth is bound up instead in God's love for us in Christ. Whatever sort of Gentile we may be. So perhaps the question is not then, what do we resolve this year? But where are we on the journey? What do we need for where we are? Maybe we're in a good place, setting a good pace. Maybe we need encouragement to keep going if we're not sure that this baby means very much for us. Maybe we need deeper learning about what it means that this baby was born in Bethlehem so long ago. Maybe seeing things in a new way, if we've made the trip to the manger so many times that it all seems mundane. Maybe wrestling with how to live once we know that it is not, that not only is God's overwhelming, container-shattering, border-busting love, not just for the lucky or the knowledgeable, not even just for us, but for every human being who has ever been or is or will be. These are all okay places to be. But the journey isn't over yet, my friends. So think about it. And let's talk more as we continue on this way together. This year, as we continue seeking God in Christ, may the Magi be our guides. Amen.